What's happening guys and welcome back to the channel for today's video Wu-Tang is in the building as we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Rise of the Beasts studio series Deluxe Class Mirage Now this is a figure which I've been so excited to get my hands on because he was one of the biggest breakout characters from that Rise of the Beast movie and I never thought it was possible for a live action movie Transformer to have as much personality as Mirage had I mean he really was awesome Now in terms of the actual figure to be honest I do think it looks so much nicer in hand than how some of those original CG renders looked, although still not perfect, because as we turn him here to the side, unfortunately he is kind of kibble ridden. Now I think there are a few reasons for this. First of all, to my knowledge, this is the first officially licensed Porsche that we're seeing, at least for Studio Series. So I think this is a case where the vehicle mode ultimately took priority over the robot mode, and another thing would be that when Mirage would transform in the film, his robot mode was clean. I mean, he was a lean, mean fighting machine. There was next to no vehicle mode pieces on that robot mode design. And for a deluxe class, those pieces have to end up somewhere, which is why I have slightly mistransformed him to better match what we saw in the movie. So, for example, I've angled the backpack out of the way so that we can take the Porsche doors and slide them closer into the body. Because personally, I think this looks a little nicer when in comparison to the stock transformation. But with that out of the way, the details on this guy, much like all of the previous Rise of the Beast figures, are actually really nicely done. I mean, that face sculpt looks awesome, such an improvement over the mainline release. And they've even accurately detailed the back of the head to match the CGI design. So that's a pretty sweet touch. Now, whilst the backpack nowhere resembles what we saw in the movie, I do like it how they tried to simulate the rear spoiler. You know, in the movie, when he would transform, the spoiler would end up on his back. So yeah, that's a pretty nice attention to detail. And I also like how the chest uses the front part of the Porsche when in comparison to the mainline version, which was just a solid brick. So that looks pretty cool. Still not too sure why Hasbro has this obsession over clear plastic. I mean, I kind of understand why the entire forearm has been cast this way. It's because when you transform him, these windows windows will become the windows of the Porsche, but I'm pretty certain many collectors would have preferred this guy to have been solid plastic with maybe black painted over windows. I think maybe that would have looked a little better and perhaps would have resulted in this guy lasting a little longer over time, but the torso looks pretty nice as so do the thighs and the detail that we have here for the side of the thighs and the feet and the shins do look great, but unfortunately, yeah, the leg design does look a little wonky, which is a shame. Now, in terms of his articulation, the head is on a ball joint, so it can look up and down as well as rotate left to right. The shoulders can go the full 360 as well as hinge out to the sides. We also get a very sturdy bicep joint. And to be fair, there aren't too many hollow spaces on this guy. For the most part, he has been pretty nicely filled in, which is cool. We also get a 90 degree bend there out of the elbow, wrist rotation. And if you transform the backpack how I have it here, you'll also get a waist joint. So that's pretty cool. That can rotate left to right. And technically due to transformation, a fake ab crunch, which I have found to be an absolute godsend, especially for some of those slightly more dynamic poses. The hips can kick forwards that far, which is surprisingly a pretty decent range as well as back I'd say roughly to that far they'll also go out to the sides we get a very sturdy thigh joint and if you accurately transform him as per the instructions then you do get a pretty decent range here out of the knee although due to the way this has been designed I'm gonna be honest guys I do think that is one of the ugliest knee bends that we've seen in a very long time for a studio series deluxe I mean it does just kind of look like a big hunk of junk so yeah that's not too clever and then finally here for the ankles these can rock forwards backwards as well as side to side and due to transformation can rotate the full 360 so overall, in terms of detail, for the most part, I think it's a pretty nicely done figure better than the main line in my personal opinion and the articulation is there. I mean, he has all of the joints that you would expect from a modern deluxe class, but it's the workarounds that you have to go through in order to really maximize their range of motion, which I think is overall going to be a little tedious, but yeah, definitely not a terrible looking figure. Now, in terms of Mirage's accessories, he does include one arm cannon, and this has been really nicely detailed. And I also like that when you place it over the hand, it really does look like it's transformed out of the arm, much like we saw in the film. Maybe would have been nice had they added a bit of metallic blue on the inside to match what we saw from the movie. And it also would have been pretty cool had he included two. But yeah, overall, this definitely does get the job done, and it is a pretty sweet looking gun. Now as we check out a few comparisons, on the left we have the Studio Series Mirage compared to the right which is the mainline version. Now when both of these guys were initially announced I did have no idea as to which one I ultimately was going to prefer but after having them both in hand I think again Studio Series is for the win because despite from the front the mainline version appearing to be lean as you turn him here to the back he was plagued with a massive backpack and really was the definition of a shell former whereas here with the Studio Series version whilst the kibble still is on 
on the bad side, he is definitely a transformer. You know, the conversion that the Studio Series version goes through is crazy in comparison to the mainline release. Not to mention the chest design, the paint apps, and in particular the head sculpt. Again, personally, I find to be all superior when in comparison here to this mainline release. Next up, we have the Dark of the Moon Mirage, which is technically the last time that we saw this guy in live action, and there is no competition in terms of their characters. Rise of the Beast Mirage was an absolute standout, whereas Dark of the Moon Mirage unfortunately was a background character and really only slightly stood out in the Dark of the Moon video game. And for a few quick fire comparisons, here is Mirage compared alongside mainline Wheeljack as well as the Rise of the Beast Studio Series Bumblebee. Mirage is a smidge taller than Bumblebee, which is accurate to the movie, so that's pretty cool to see. Here he is with the Studio Series Air Razor and the Core Class RC, Voyager Class Optimus Prime and Leader Class Optimus Primal, Autobots Roll Out, Voyager Class Rhinox and Voyager Class Cheetor, and then finally alongside Battle Trap and Leader Class Scourge. Now as we get stuck into the transformation for Mirage, the first thing you're going to want to do is come around here to the back of the head, take what will become the headlights in the vehicle mode and pull these here upwards and set them here off to the back. This is also a look that you can have for the robot mode if you wanted to, so yeah, you have a few options. The next thing would be to then come here to the chest piece, take these pieces here, angle them outwards and then fold them here forward. So there are two double joints there, do the exact same here for this side, so bring this here out to the sides and then straighten this section out. The next thing I'd recommend to do would be to take the shoulders, dip these sections here down slightly, which should allow enough clearance for us to then take this neck piece and pull it up and over the top of Mirage's head. Then you're going to want to straighten out the shoulder joints. Personally, I like to do this just to kind of get them out of the way. We can then come to that joint, which I mentioned previously, which kind of acts as a fake ab crunch and then extend this piece here upwards, which should allow for enough clearance for us to then take the entire backpack and the entire waist and rotate this here all the way around so the front is now facing the back. Now this next step is something which you have to pay close attention to because for robot mode basically everything is like this whereas for vehicle mode what you're going to want to do is extend these joints here like that and as you guys can see that will expose kind of where the waist does attach so this almost mushroom peg. What you're going to do is take these hips slide these here upwards to just get them out of the way and you're going to want to make sure that this piece tucks inside so fold here at this hinge joint and keep bending until that does snap there into place. Make sure it's in this position for vehicle mode, otherwise you're going to have an absolute nightmare later on during the transformation. We can then take the hip joints and just straighten these outwards like that. The next step would be to then take the shoulder joints of the bot mode and bring these here backwards just like this and do the same here for this side. I would then personally recommend to take the wheels. As you guys can see, there is a little slot that should peg here into this tab, so snap that in there, come here to this side and do the exact same. The next step would be to then take the headlights as you guys can see, there are these tiny little tabs here which are going to sit on the underneath of this piece here. So snap this section in there and do the same here for this side. It can be kind of difficult to get them in and then we can line up what was originally the front part of Mirage's chest with this front bumper piece. So just snap all of that into place and the details on this Porsche are sharp. We can then take this whole backpack piece and hinge this here backwards just like that and then the next step would be to take these shoulders. As you can see we get these tiny very cringeworthy transparent little tabs which are going to slide into these slots. So bend at Mirage's elbow so you're left with something along the lines of this and and slide this inwards until it does click into place. So do the same here for this side. So slide this here backwards until this tab here does snap into place. Now we come to my personal least favorite part about the transformation, that being the legs. And these really and truly are a nightmare. So first of all, take the feet, rotate these here all the way around just like that. The next step would be to then take what will become the doors of the Porsche, bring these here forwards. And then at the same time, I would recommend utilizing the, both the hip and the thigh joint to kind of swivel this here outwards to allow enough clearance for this door to pass over the top of this piece because you don't want to rub any of that metallic silver off. So do that here all the way up like that. The next step would be to then take this fender piece, bring this here outwards, and you're basically going to want to bend here at the knee, bring this piece upwards until this tab does line up with that slot. So just bring this here 
inwards, snap that into place. We can then take this double hinge joint at the wheel and shift this piece here forwards. Now you could technically peg the rear of the vehicle into this piece, although personally I'm going to leave it detached for a later step of transformation. Now what you're going to want to do is utilize the hip joint to kind of line the front of the door up with this little slot. So shoot this in until it does snap there into place. Come around here to this side and do the exact same process. So again, utilize both the hip and the thigh joint so that we can take this door and kind of slide it past both the window and this front section. So lift this here all the way up. You're then gonna wanna take this fender piece, bring this down, bend at the knee, and basically just keep bending at this door until it does line up perfectly with this fender piece. So snap that in there. We can then take this double hinge joint, shift the wheel forward, take the foot, rotate this piece here around, and much like we did previously, just angle the hip joint here upwards until the door does snap into place just like that. Now comes one of my least favorite parts about the transformation, that being this whole section, which is an absolute pain in the butt. So first of all, make sure that you take what will become the front of the roof and basically extend this piece here forwards. Now on the underside of this piece, we have these two tabs, which should slide into these little slots. Gonna be honest guys, these are an absolute nightmare. And then we get these two clear tabs, which should slide into these slots. So I'd recommend to snap the rear of the vehicle in, bend here, here at kind of the ankle pivot so that it allows for enough clearance for us to kind of basically scoop this here backwards so that we can snap these clear tabs into these slots which is honestly such a pain in the butt it's really going to take quite a bit of force to get these in i mean nine times out of ten this side slides in no problem but this side is always such a pain so just keep persevering with it five hours later just like that until it does click in. As I said, it can be super tedious to kind of line that up perfectly. Then if they've detached themselves, tab back in the rear of the vehicle, and then you're just gonna wanna take those slots and line them up perfectly with those tabs. And then finally, these pieces should also snap very securely into place. We can then take the roof of the vehicle, snap that in, give everything a good old squeeze to make sure that the vehicle mode looks nice and proper. And then for some finishing touches, turn here to the underside. We do get these tiny little indents that basically the cannon is going to slide into so just snap that in there take the toes flip these upwards i actually thought that was some of the best studio series weapon storage that we've seen in an incredibly long time and bang <laughs> Here we have Mirage, fully transformed into his officially licensed Porsche 911 RS 3.8 vehicle mode. And it looks absolutely incredible. Although, the transformation going from point A to point B is a nightmare. Especially in regards to tabbing this rear window into the side fenders and into the spoiler. Honestly guys, I still really haven't mastered the knack of it. And I think it is mainly to do with the clear plastic. You know, you don't want to apply too much pressure because you don't want to crack it. But then you do have to apply pressure to really get those tabs to lock into those slots. So, yeah, it's kind of unfortunate but one of the best looking studio series vehicles and as i mentioned previously it really does seem like the vehicle mode took high priority than as opposed to the robot mode because from almost every single angle this thing looks sharp i mean first of all completely decked out head to toe in metallic silver this thing looks absolutely incredible we get those amazing super sick blue racing stripes that we saw in the movie with the autobot logo specifically detailed i mean check that out that is so nicely done we get the very distinctive circular headlights the only only detail which is missing on this would be the metallic silver rims. I would imagine that's probably due to a budget reason. I mean, come on, this is a deluxe class and I think this is one of the very few ones that are completely painted in silver. So I imagine that's the reason. But as we flip him here to the underside, this is how he transforms. So despite him having quite a bit of kibble in robot mode, he's definitely not a lazy transformer. He does transform a lot. And I also like the details of them actually sculpting in the RS 3.8 into the rear of the spoiler. We get the exhaust, the tail lights, everything about this thing looks sick. I will say one thing though, because the tint that they've used here for the windscreen is super dark, it would not have mattered at all had this been cast in solid black plastic. So yeah, that's a little strange, but all four wheels on this guy are pinned on, so he does have no problemos in rolling out into battle alongside Optimus Prime and the rest of the Autobots. Now, as we take a look at a few comparisons in the vehicle mode, again, on the left, we have Studio Series Mirage compared to the right, which is the mainline version. Because Studio Series is officially licensed, there's no competition. I mean, this guy looks absolutely incredible. And because it is an officially licensed Porsche, I'm hoping this opens up the potential for maybe some officially licensed G1 Jazz figures. Personally, I would love to see Takara Tomy's take on a masterpiece Jazz. But yeah, as you guys can see, the Studio Series Mirage looks absolutely incredible in vehicle mode. And I 
I guess technically if you own this mainline version and you want to pick up the SS version, this could kind of simulate when he does use his holographic abilities in order to divert the cops. Here he is alongside the Studio Series Deluxe Class Bumblebee, so very accurate in terms of scale. I mean, these guys look smack on to how they appeared in the movie. Studio Series Core Class RC, just so you guys can see roughly how they stack up. And because at the time of this recording, we don't have a Studio Series version of Wheeljack, here he is alongside the mainline version. And then to round things off, here he is with the Rise of the Beast Optimus Prime. And yeah, these guys look fantastic in terms of their scaling. Really awesome pairing as well. You know, these Rise of the Beast figures have for the most part been fantastic. So yeah, a great addition to the collection in my opinion. Now let's get stuck into reverse transformation, which may just be more tedious than going from robot into vehicle mode. So to kickstart things off, we've come here to the underside, remove Mirage's blaster. What we can then do is take his toes, flip these pieces here out, and then come around to the back, take the rear spoiler, and detach it away from these two clear tabs. Now the only way that I've found to really be able to kind of poke this section here through would be to take this roof assembly here, disengage it away from its tabs, and then basically take your finger and shoot it through this piece to kind of pry this up just like that. There really is no easy way that I've found, again, to kind of remove this because as you can see, there are tiny little indents. So it really does clip in there and it's just so difficult to get a hold of. So yeah, really cringeworthy in my opinion, but then we can take this back panel, snap that there into place. The next step would be to then use those hip joints, which I showcased previously, and kind of angle this and wriggle it out to the sides until the front part of the door does separate from this little gunmetal tab. Once you've done that, we can then take this section here and hinge it upwards. Take the wheel, it is on a double hinge joint, so slide this here inwards. Rotate at the foot, so the front is now facing the back. The next step would then to be take the door and basically just angle this here all the way back, just like this, and then take this fender piece, depending on how you want to transform him. You know, you could leave it like this. Personally, I like to bring it here forwards so that we can take these doors and so that they can sit slightly closer in towards the body and basically repeat the same process on the opposite side. Once you've done that, we can then turn our attention here to the front of the vehicle. So first of all, I'd recommend to take this section here and lift it upwards and then come here to the side windows and basically just wriggle these here outwards, which should detach the shoulder joints away from the side of the vehicle. We can then just kind of angle these here forwards to get them out of the way. So do the same here for this side, angle that there forwards, come here to the front portion of the vehicle and basically slide these pieces here down, which then should allow us to take the headlights, bring these here forwards and then lift these here upwards just like this. Now we've done this, we can then take the wheels, attach these here away from their slots, and then what I like to do is take these shoulders, again lift these here upwards, and utilize that kind of double hinge joint which I showcased previously. So pull this here outwards, and then collapse this here in upon itself, and rotate all the way around so that the torso is now in perfect alignment with the front of the thighs. So the next step would be to then take this entire chest piece, pull this down, snap the front pieces into place, take the shoulders, lift these here here upwards until these snap into place and then take these tires angle these here out to the back and then take the entire backpack and basically pull this here backwards like this again you can angle this piece however you so choose personally again I think this just helps aid the articulation so I do like to flare it outwards and then for a finishing touch we can take the front headlights and basically the front bumper piece is going to slide into this gap now because this is completely decked out in silver and there is quite a bit of force required I'm not too sure how that paint is going to hold up over time but with all that being said there we have mirage fully transformed back into his robot mode and so, wrapping up on this review for the Transformers Studio Series Rise of the Beasts Deluxe Class Mirage. Overall, it's a decent figure. I mean, it's not perfect. In terms of robot mode, there are quite a few compromises made, mainly due to how he transformed in the movie. You know, the robot mode design in the film was super clean. And because this is an officially licensed Porsche, this really is a case of where vehicle mode ultimately took priority. Articulation, you know, the joints are there, but it is really just finding a work around the kibble to truly maximize the posability transformation personally I found to be kind of tedious I mean he really is kibbletastic so moving certain pieces out of the way again can be a little frustrating but once you get the hang of things should be fairly straightforward and the Porsche vehicle mode is flawless I mean I have no issues with it at all besides that it's still using clear pieces instead of solid plastic I would have much rather had all of the windows been cast out of black solid plastic than as opposed to clear plastic but overall I do like this guy you know if you've been collecting the rise of the beast figures 
Mirage was the biggest standout character. So this is one that I would recommend, but I'm pretty certain that in a few years time, Hasbro will likely bring out either a Formula One version of this guy or maybe the Ferrari, which will allow them a little more creative freedom in how clean they can get that robot mode. So you guys let me know down in the comment section below. What do you guys think of Studio Series Mirage? And until my next video, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.